G'day reefers, I'm Kevin the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're at Connected Reef. We're gonna be looking at a variety of automatic fish feeders and we're gonna show you the pros and cons of each of the models and we're gonna choose an automatic fish feeder which is perfect for this tank. Connected Reef is a six by two by two. Now it's a relatively minimalistic reef. You can see we have a structure that runs effectively the length of the tank and there's lots of coralline algae with some basic corals. We have corellomorphs, there's a uh, finger leather cinularia, tubiopora, uh, as well as a number of anemones. <clears throat> you can see we have the green anemone at the back here, as well as a number of the, the rose BTAs. The fish are, again, relatively minimalistic. Uh, we have uh, an Australian stripey. He's done a great job of cleaning up the aptasia in this tank. There's a blue tang, a neon stripe wrasse. Uh, we've got the olivaceous tang, a pair of clownfish, a couple of cardinals. And being minimalistic like this really suits the purpose of the tank. It's a room divider. So it's able to be viewed from this office here, as well as from outside and it really provides a nice serene environment in this office area. Now, the lighting on this, on this tank, we've got two Radeon Gen 4s, and for the types of corals that we've got, they really are the perfect light. They're very easy for us to adjust, but they're putting out a, a nice spread for this tank. We've also got an Ecotech Vectra M, uh, Vortec MP40 down one end, so there's a single wave maker, and the return comes out of this end. So we'll go around the back and have a look at the filtration before we talk about the automatic fish feeders for this system. Here we are out the back behind Connected Reef and we're looking at the filtration. You can see the plumbing feeds down into this left hand side here and it moves through a refugium or a, an, a refugium style algae scrubber and that is powered by a prime fuge then it moves into this section here, which is where we have the skimmer, it's a NIOS 160, and through a reactor, back to the return pump, it also feeds into a chiller, and then back into the tank. So relatively straightforward. Uh, well, you can see we've also got a dosing pump. Uh, the, this system is running uh, continuum sculpture part A, part B. Uh, we do about a 50% water change when we're here about once a month. So it's a really nice balance, easy to maintain system that really suits the purpose. Um, so let's go back to the tank and we'll talk about the auto feeders. We have three options for automatic fish feeders for this tank. We're going to take you through the different options in more detail, but to show you quickly, the first option is an Eheim everyday feeder. Now this is the classic that we've used on many, many tanks. It's a very good feeder. We know it very well. The next Eheim is actually uh, the Auto Feeder Plus. Now it's a Wi-Fi model. It's a bit more sophisticated. We'll have a, a closer look at that one in a minute. And the third option is the Owasa. Uh, it's a relatively new Auto Feeder for us. We've we used it on a couple of tanks and so far we've been seeing some great things with the Owasa. Um, so let's start by having a closer look at the Eheim everyday feeder. Let's have a look at the Eheim Everyday Feeder. Now, this is the feeder that I've probably used the most uh, on tanks, and I use this as, uh, as an everyday feeder, a, a feeder that uh, stays on the tank and is dosing food into the tank every single day, as opposed to uh, a holiday feeder that you might set up for Christmas or Easter holidays. Now, it's a very easy to use feeder. So you can see that the hopper comes off, it's easy to fill. You have got this section here. Now for today's demonstration, we're using the Ocean Nutrition Formula One Marine Pellets. Now this is the small size. I find that with any auto feeder, it's best to use a pellet because the homogenous size of the pellet makes it a little bit more consistent with its feeding as opposed to flakes in particular, but even granules sometimes. So. I typically only ever uh, fill up the hopper about a third to halfway. Uh, sometimes if you fill it all the way up, it can clog a little bit. So we'll fill it halfway. 
this goes on like so and you're able to very accurately control the size of the feed by adjusting this little section here. Now, let's just put it on. One of the advantages of this system is that you do have a manual feed button, which is a great feature, something I look for in an automatic fish feeder. Oops, okay. So we'll do a feed. Something that I would always suggest is that it's a good idea to do test runs so that you know how much food is being dispensed. Okay, so there you have it. Now, that's probably slightly more than I want this tank to be fed, but having the control of this system, of this feeder, does make it very easy to reduce or increase the size of the feeder. So they're a very good feeder. Uh, they're uh, quite uh, appropriately priced. I think they're about $120, $130 thereabouts. Um, they're easy to program, they're very reliable. They actually draw air through the food with this little fan. And that is a big plus because it minimizes the moisture in the, the hopper. Um, so it's less likely to clog up and it's battery powered. Now, if you're looking for an automatic fish feeder that uh, has a DC connection to the power, then uh, this one is not for you. And that's something we'll look at with the other ones as well, uh, the way that they're powered. But this is definitely one of the options that I was considering for Connected Reef. But let's have a look at the next Eheim. So the Eheim Auto Feeder Plus is, I'm gonna call it the Lamborghini of auto feeders. And uh, it's relatively new. Uh, we, we've only been selling it for uh, probably a year now, I guess. But it really is a, an excellent automatic fish feeder. And I'll just run you through some of the, uh, the features. Now, it's similar to the Eheim Everyday Feeder in the way that it opens up the hopper. You've probably got a slightly better system for controlling the amount of food that it's dispensing. But the two biggest differences with this and the everyday feeder is that this is actually app controlled. You can see that there's no screen to allow you to use, uh, to program it like the everyday feeder. And so you have to use the app for this. And the other difference is that it's powered by DC. And so it does actually have to plug into the power to be used. It's not a battery operated system. Now that can be uh, a, a, an advantage or a disadvantage. And uh, unfortunately in the case of Connected Reef, where we want to put this feeder isn't gonna allow us connection to the power. So that, for that reason, we're not going to go for the, um, this Auto Feeder Plus. Um, having said that, for, for certain tanks, this is definitely uh, the, the best auto feeder on the market. It, it's got, as we said before, it's got the app control. Um, everything that we, we know about it so far really shows that it's been a, a reliable unit, uh, very uh, precise. It also has a few other options um, that the others don't. For example, it will alert you if the amount of food in the auto feeder gets low. So certainly some, some great options, but today, uh, because we actually don't want uh, an auto feeder that has to plug into the power, and the fact it is a bit more expensive than the others, uh, this one is actually over $300. Uh, we're not gonna go for the auto feeder plus, but like I said, it's the Lamborghini of auto feeders, and uh, it's certainly a really cool piece of kit. So let's have a look at the last of the auto feeder options today, the Owasa. So our third option for an auto feeder for a connected reef is the Owasa. Now, this unit is a little bit different to the Eheims in, the, in its look. Uh, you'll note it's reminiscent of the Apex version of auto feeder. And uh, the way that you access the hopper is you pull the hopper out. Very easy like so. Okay. And to put the food in, you open up the top, tip the food in. We've already put some food in this one. And to control the size of the food, of the dose, you move this little lever uh, across. So we're gonna have it on the smaller side. So it's just a small feed today. We'll put it back on. And there is, of course, a auto feed. Now this takes batteries, or you can put a DC cable in it as well. So here we go, you can see the hopper is coming out. And then it spins and puts the food in. So we probably made that food, that that's feed size a little bit too small. 
I will uh, take out the hopper once it's finished this and I'll increase the size of the food of the feed. Um, so as I said, uh, you can control, you can use batteries with this one or you can use the DC cable. Um, uh, for connected reef, it, it's important that we have a system that are, will run on batteries. Um, and the fact that it's uh, a very uh, affordable price, it's a similar price to every, the Eheim everyday feeder. Um, this is certainly a good option for connected reef. So today for connected reef, we've decided to go for the Owasa auto feeder. Now, we'll put all the Owasa auto feeder on connected reef, and I'll just show you a couple of things. You can buy this little uh, easy uh, ramp that it sits on that allows you to bracket it onto a vertical piece of glass. Now, we're not gonna use this one today because we don't really have any vertical pieces of glass that are free in a position that suits the auto feeder. But what we are going to do is we're putting on these four little plastic feet that go on underneath. This is the fourth one. Now this will allow us to sit it on the bridge without it getting wet. So there you have it, the perfect position for our auto feeder. And we'll give it a feed and see how the fish like it. There you have it. We've got our auto fish feeder for connected reef. And certainly uh, out of the three excellent options, the Owasa is probably the best suited for this tank. So it's always good to know exactly what you want with an automatic fish feeder so that you can choose the one on the market that is best for you. So that's it for today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. That's it for this week's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Don't forget to like and comment on all our videos and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to Gallery Aquatica TV for more exciting episodes to come. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!